my name is Dennis Van Alstorp, and I'm with the Be Informed Partnership. And right now we're going to talk about Varroa mite control as it pertains to the Winter Loss and Management Survey of 2011-2012. One of the first questions we ask in the Winter Loss Survey is, did you use one of these products? And there we list a whole bunch of products which are known to control Varroa mites. 39% of beekeepers reported that they used a known Varroa mite control product in the last year. Those beekeepers lost significantly fewer colonies than those who didn't, suggesting that using a known Varroa mite control product has a lot of advantages in if you want to keep your colonies alive. We can also ask the question about what products you used. Here you can see four different products that have indications that they did work in, the, in that the people who use these products, Apigard and Apolite Var, which are thymol based products or essential oil based products, Amitraz, which is a, or a Amitraz based product, including Apivar, or formic acid, which is an organic acid. People who use these four products lost significantly fewer colonies than those who didn't use anything at all, and in some cases, people who used another Varroa mite control product. Some of the products, it's pretty clear, have stopped working in the country. So if you look at Kumaphos-based products, including Checkmite, Fluvalinate, which is in Apistan, people who use these products lost just the same number of colonies as those who used other or didn't use any product at all. Hopguard and Sucreside, we saw no evidence that those products reduced colony mortality. We can also ask some questions about alternative varroa mite control products. So there are a lot of people who report using essential oils or garlic powder, menthol, wintergreen, or mint oils. Um, we did not, however, the people who reported using their own concoctions of these products did not report having significantly lower losses than those who used no product at all. Powdered sugar, powdered sugar, of course, is a method that people use, and the people who reported using or trying powdered sugar did not report losing significantly fewer colonies than those who used nothing at all. Also mineral oil, there are some people who fumigate with mineral oil um, and again no evidence that use of mineral oil was associated with reduced colony losses when compared to people who used nothing at all. Drone brood removal is a common IPM technique used to control varroa mite and it works basically because Varroa mites prefer to reproduce in drone brood because they're going to have more children and so they will invade drone brood over worker brood. And beekeepers can use this to their advantage because what they can do is they can put a sheet of a frame of drone brood into the colonies, let the drones jump in and when all that drone is capped, take that out and destroy that drone brood by freezing it or feeding it to chickens and then putting that drone brood back into the colony. And so in a way they're using that drone brood to suck out some of the varroa mites. Um, certainly if we look at the entire response population, there was no significant difference between people who used drone brood uh, removal and those who didn't. However, more close, careful examination of the data suggests that it may have advantages for some beekeepers. This is especially true if the people reported that they used drone brood removal on 100% of their colonies. So some people only used it as a proportion of their colonies, less than 50% of their colonies. Those people, there was no clear advantage to using drone brood removal. But people who used it in 100% of their colonies, there was a clear indication that they lost fewer colonies than those who did not use anything at all. And so it seems that if you're going to use drone brood removal, you should do it in your entire operation and not just a couple of colonies. If we look at drone brood by region, what you can see is that people who were in the northern states um, lost fewer colonies if they used drone brood removal than those who didn't who lived in the northern states. This difference was not apparent in southern states, which is an interesting finding, um, but a pretty clear and stark one. Screen bottom boards. Screen bottom boards are um, basically additions that you put on your hive that allow varroa mites that might be on the adult population of bees to fall through the screen and be removed from the colony of bees. And this has advantages because in a normal situation if a mite falls to the bottom board, a bee passes by, that mite jumps back on the bee and reinvades the colony. The screen bottom board acts as a way of preventing that from happening. So if the mites are dro drop off, they're removed from the colony. 
And there is evidence, experimental designs, that show this work. However, in this case, um, in our survey, the people who reported using screen bottom boards did not lose more or less than those who did not use screen bottom boards. Um, and again, if we look at region, we don't see a significant difference um, between people who used it or people who didn't. We can also ask the question about how long did you put your screen bottom boards in? There are a lot of people who think that having screen bottom boards in for the winter months is a bad idea. There's actually very little evidence to suggest that. Um, and in fact, if you look at this graph here, it seems, and this seems normal, that there tends to be a trend that people who use screen bottom boards for longer periods of time lose fewer colonies than those who don't. It's very messy data though, so I wouldn't go too, too, too detailed in it. But if you're going to use screen bottom boards, it's probably a good idea to keep them in as long as you can. Small cell size. The idea behind small cell size is that our comb and our foundation is slightly larger than natural honeybee cells. And so some people believe that by, by making smaller cells, the varroa mite can't reproduce in the cells. There's no evidence for this in the literature and certainly no evidence for this in the survey. People who use small cell size lost just as many colonies as those who didn't. And again, if we look for regional effects, there seemed to be no difference between the two groups. So again, to summarize, I think it's important to use some sort of varroa mite control. This is suggesting, the data suggests that some products work better than others. But I do want to emphasize that a limitation of the data that we've just presented is the fact that we're only doing monofactorial analysis. We're only looking at one product at a time. It could very well be when we combine, a, say, a, a, a mineral oil treatment with a screen bottom board that there may be dramatic effects. And so we're, now that we have enough data, we're hoping in the next year or so to be able to present and look for these multiple or synergistic effects. The information is for educational purposes only. References to commercial products or trade names do not imply endorsement by the Be Informed Partnership or its members. The results presented here are the summary of the population who responded. The sample may not be representative of the beekeeping population at large. These results simply highlight differences in the sample population. The results cannot be considered conclusive, causative, protective, or a test to product efficacy or lack of efficacy.